Well, hello, my name is Bob Brown. I own Pigeon River Farm here in Marion, Wisconsin. Uh, we have a 50 acre farm. We do rotational grazing. We uh, raise cattle, highland, actually highland cattle. We uh, raise goats and sheep. And we also have uh, poultry operations. What I was uh, interested in when I applied for the SARE grant is I had a, a vision, something I was thinking about here. We use, even though I'm very efficient on the farm, we still use a lot of fossil fuels that I would like to not have to use. And so I've, I was kind of looking around for possibility of electric tractor. But one of the challenges I saw with the electric tractor right off the bat was, Nothing wrong with them. I like EV cars, I like hybrids, but I like the hybrids better because if I run low on fuel, I have the ability to uh, switch over to the gas engine. So I have the, uh, the luxury of both. So that was kind of in the back of my mind and I put up a large solar array. And that was the other thing. And I says, okay, I got this big solar array and it's running the well pump, it's running the lights in the shop, it runs a lot of things, but it doesn't make any difference whatsoever on the fuel tank. So that was the, the stimulus for the SARE grant. So I, I, I wrote up a proposal and it was a two-part proposal. The first level was proof of concept. Can this actually be done? So part of the key there was the coming in, how do I get that electric power through electric motor into the powertrain. Well, on these older style tractors that had belt pulleys on them, it became a viable option. Well, what's interesting is it's very quiet compared to the engine. Right, yeah. right. But it's a lot noisier than I thought it was going to be because all the straight cut gears in this whole one, it was never intended to be done this way. Yeah. So it's not stuff you'd ever hear. So, so I'll just go ahead. Okay, we are in reverse. Everybody's out of the way. Off. One of the things that we were, were challenged with is now determining, is this viable? Now we know that functions, it functions very well. Is it gonna be viable? Is it does make sense economically? So that is the study portion for this year of 2024. What I'm doing is I'm doing a task, like trimming fence lines, one of the things that we commonly do, uh, raking hay with a utility style tractor. That's class these have fallen into. And what we're doing is going out and I'm doing half the task, say raking hay. So I'll take, I'll rake five acres of hay using the electric drive, and then I switch it over, I shut that off, and I'll do the next five acres off of the gasoline engine. And then I measure how much electricity we used and how much gasoline was used. And that's gonna give me a detail over time of the overall viability economically and even from a carbon sequestering standpoint. Uh, so I'm looking at it from two models from the electric. One is what I'm pulling off the grid, how efficient is that, or the value of going with uh, the solar. So I have both components, so I'm measuring both out. And as I said, again, against the whole thing is against the gasoline that's consumed. You know, diesel would be a little more efficient, I just happen to have a gas tractor that's being utilized. But it's a model that is very, very viable in my mind. Now the data won't be released till I complete my, uh, the completion of the SARE grant and that would be the end of 2024, I think it's January 25, it will be available online. So we will have learned an awful lot. I have learned a lot since it's already heading into fall uh, and I'll tell you right now, it's looking pretty promising. This, this looks like a possibility of a pretty viable, viable idea. Uh, but the, the data will tell me the, the, you know, the truth on the, on the matter, how, how good it is. The couple little technical details that I have uh, learned is we don't have the system turned all the way up. I keep it actually in more of the fuel economy mode. That would be for a layperson, the lower horsepower. Since I'm not intending to plow fields, disc fields, I'm doing Lighter duty tasks, I typically stay around a 20 some horsepower range and very seldom, very seldom do I even see that limit made doing the fence line trimming, doing the raking of the hay, uh, moving the bales, uh, doing tedding, I'm kind of tasked, pulling a wagon. None of that stuff is utilizing that much, much energy. But when the gas engine, it's not at its most efficient. 
Uh, the gas engine doesn't lend itself, or in a diesel also would be the same thing, under these light load conditions. So I'm using a little bigger tractor under a condition that if it was using the, the, the piston engine, uh, I wouldn't be at its maximum efficiency. You know, a smaller tractor, smaller engine tractor would do better, but the flip side of that is I wouldn't have the capacity. On the SARE grant, um, th that vehicle, meaning that financial vehicle made available to farms to take on ideas that normally would never be explored. It's an idea that I, you know, that many of us come up with great ideas, but without some technical and financial support, it's hard to go forward with any kind of project. And this one is a, probably a really good example of it. We'll find out the viabil viability of the of the project, but if it wouldn't have been for the SARE funding in the first place, it would have been just an idea written on a napkin, maybe talk to some uh, fellow farmers at the coffee shop. But other than that, it would have never gone anywhere. I would say the, the discipline of going through the, the SARE process makes you think everything out. You got to go through, you got your reports to write and so on, and that keeps you in, in kind of in a, um, so the project moves along efficiently. And that's one of the things that has been very good. Uh, keeps you on budget, it keeps you on, on, on task, and you know when each task is going to take, take place. So it's been a, a wonderful experience for me. I've, uh, I've learned an awful lot in the duration of doing this.